We're going to go through the Unit 1 review real quick. Uh, the first section is you need to be able to do metric conversions. In order to do metric conversions, you need to have that thing, as we refer to it. So K, H, D, A, dot. And remember, the dot is the base units, D, C, M. And we're just going to move the decimal point based on this. So first one, going from 4.90 millimeters to meters. Uh, millimeters, when we look over on the thing, is M. Meters would be the dot, so we're going three to the left. So our answer going decimal point three to the left should be point zero zero four nine zero one. Uh, the next one going kiloliters to decaliters. Kiloliters is right here. Decaliters is right here. So we're going two to the right. So one two to the right. Five eight four zero one. Uh, to go from centimeters to hectometers, centimeters is right here. We're going one, two, three, four places to the left. So here, one, two, three, four places to the left. And again, we're going point, and we fill those empty spots with zeros, three, nine, eight, four. The next one is kilograms to centigrams. One, two, three, four, five to the right. So one, two, three, four, five. 231. Uh, deciliters to decaliters is 2 to the left, so it should be 0 0.4322. Uh, liters is the dot going to milliliters is 3 to the right, so 79540. And the last one is hectograms to milligrams, which is going to be 5 to the right, so if you move that decimal point 5 to the right, you get 1573. The next section is going to be scientific notation, or sorry, significant digits. Be able, be able to identify the significant digits in each of the numbers. Uh, for these, remember the Atlantic Pacific rule. The Atlantic, if the decimal point is absent, we start on the right and find the first thing other than zero, and then count that and all the rest of the decimal uh, place values. If the decimal point is present, the Pacific side, which is the left, we're going to go left to right and find the first thing other than zero and count. So for the first number, and I apologize for the period, but we'll kind of do that. First number is 439.57. There is a decimal point present, so we start on the left-hand side. We go, we'll, first thing other than zero is the four. One, two, three, four, five significant digits. And again, significant digits just means the numbers that were measured. For this next number, there is no decimal point, so we start on the right. We go to the first thing other than zero, which is the three, and we count one, two, three, four. There are four place values that were measured. This number has a decimal point present, so we started on the left, and it would be 6. This also has a decimal point present, and notice we have all these zeros. We skip past to the 5 is the first thing, so there's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 in this one as well. For the math section, we're actually changing the directions that I have on here, and we're going to do it the exact way we've done in class. Identify the number of significant digits in each part of the problem. Circle the number that is fewer. So. For number 13, 3.25 has a decimal point present, so we start on the left, one, two, three significant digits. Decimal point present, start on the left, first thing other than zero is four, so one, two significant digits. That's the lower number, that's how many our answer can have. Same thing here, decimal point present, start on the left, that'd be four, this would be three, this would be three, this would be two. Again, starting on the left, skip over all the zeros, one, two. Uh, this would be 3, this would be 3. It doesn't matter which one you circle at this point, just circle a 3. Uh, for here you have 5 and 3, so it would be 3. Let's scroll down a little bit. Uh, our next number here in 18, this 8, and this is 4, so we will circle the 4. Here we have 4 and 3, so circle the 3. Uh, here is 6 and that looks like 7, so 6 would be our answer. The next section is scientific notation, being able to take a number and put it into scientific notation. You need to move the decimal point to get a number between 1 and 9.9. .9. So as we go across here, 6.2 would be our number between 1 and 9.9. .9. So we write 6.2 times 10. The decimal point moved to the right. Whenever we move to the right, we have numbers smaller than 1. It is negative for the exponent. And we need to count how many places we moved it. So it's, I've grouped these zeros in groups of 3 to make it counting a little easier. So this is 3. 6, 9, 12, 13, 14 spots. So 6.2 times 10 to the negative 14. 
here. Decimal point would be here. Move it over to make 5.9 as our number between 1 and 9.9. .9, so 5.9 .9 times 10. In this case, we move the decimal point to the left, so it's going to be positive. So we moved it 1, 2, 3 spots. So it's just going to be to the positive third. Here, our number between 1 and 9.9 .9 would be 4.92 times 10. We moved it left, so again it'll be positive. It's 3, 6, 9, 10, 11. 4.9 times 92 times 10 to the 11th. The next number between 1 and 9.9 .9 would be 1.3 times 10. We moved it to the right, so it's going to be negative, and we moved it three spots. The final one, the number between 1 and 9.9 .9 would be 2.4 times 10. Again, we moved it to the right, so it's negative, and we get 3, 6, 9, 10, 11 for scientific notation. The last section here that you're going to need to be able to do as far as math is through the conversions. Um, we did three different types of math problems. The first, we're going to do a dimensional analysis problem. Uh, the longest baseball game ever lasted 8.1 hours. How many minutes did the game last? So we're going to start by writing out what's given to us, which is 8.1 hours. We put a time sign, we put a line. We need to cancel the units of hours out. So we put that in the bottom, and we need to go to minutes. So we put minutes up top. Now, you ask yourself, which one's bigger, an hour or a minute? And I think we all know that an hour is bigger, so we put a 1 there. And then for minutes, there are 60 minutes in an hour. When we do 8.1 times 60, we get 486 minutes. Make sure that we not only put the number, but we put the units of minutes. For number 27, it's, a percent, or it's also a conversion problem. It says that each student needs 4.56 grams in order to be able to do an experiment, and we have 250 grams, how many students can perform it. So we have 250 grams, and we know that there are 4.56 grams for every one student. Let's abbreviate it STU. So we're going to do 250 divided by 4.56. You get 54.82. Students. Now, you can't have 0.82 of a student, so the answer here for how many students could actually get it done is 54. For number 28, you're going to do a density problem. In this case, it gives us the density of zinc is 7.14 grams per milliliter. And it also gives us a volume of 56.88 milliliters. Remember our equation, everybody loves density, so density equals the heart, which, if you remember, was mass over volume. We're going to solve for mass, so if I rearrange the equation ahead of time, because I like to do that, I'm going to say mass is equal to density times volume. So that would be 7.14 times my volume, which is 56.88. And I'm going to solve, and my answer is going to be in grams, and I got... 406.1, so 406.1 grams. The final thing that's on there is a list of lab equipment to make sure you know how to do that. So you got the equipment review sheet right at the beginning of the marking period. Go back and look through there and make sure that you know what each of those looks like. Um, and you should be all set for the test.